the Creality Ender 3 V2 3D printer. New power supply. Got it right here. Going to put it in. Coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. What I'm going to be doing here is replacing the power supply in my Creality Ender 3 V2 printer. Uh, the first one I bought had a lot of issues. If you've watched any of my previous videos on it, been through main boards, went through a big warranty hassle, finally did get a refund on it. Uh, There's some troubleshooting on the power supply. I found that every once in a while when you turn that power supply on, it overshoots the 24 volt DC output by a lot, sometimes up to near 80 volts, and that was burning out main boards. So we found the cause. Got another new main board in it. I tested with a uh, separate power supply, a benchtop power supply, which is made for testing electronics, and had no issues. And after that, tested the original power supply several more times and found out that every once in a while, a startup it will overshoot that voltage. So what I have here is a replacement power supply for the Ender 3 V2 or any of the Ender 3 printers on Amazon with tax, $30.28. So, going to head up to the loft, we're going to put this in, and hopefully I'll have a working printer. Well, this should be pretty straightforward, I would think. Of course, you have to have your regulation uh, peg cut out so it holds it up somewhat level. Let's tie wrap out of the way up here. Taking the four screws out of the base plate here, or Phillips head. And there's a plate that covers. Of course, I had to unplug my. Uh, y-axis motor there. Cable for the limit is kind of not easily accessible in there. It'd be nice if that was disconnected, but I think we can work around it. And of course that's a different size. Two screws on the side here. There is the power supply. It is held in by four screws on the back. That'd be these four right here. I'm trying to do this without un disconnecting that uh, Y axis limit switch. Because I have to take the back cover. I suppose it would have been easier if I would have done that. Then I have to reposition everything here. Now it's just a matter of one-to-one uh, -one wire change. I'm actually going to mount this before I put the wires back on it, just to make things a little bit easier. And let's see if we can't fumble around with this a little more. I don't know, I want to start straight. There we go. Well, maybe. Okay, I'll get some wires back on here. Had too much coffee this morning. There are markings in the back of the power supply for positive and negative. Your 24 volt negative is black, the positive is red. Why won't you line up? There we 
go. Well, now what the hell? That is somewhat of a tight fit up there, and you're going to have to get the cables in there just right before your holes are going to line up. And I need tie for it right there. Yeah, you want to make sure that you flip, if you're doing this, flip your switch to the appropriate voltage for wherever you are. I'm in the U.S., so 115 volts. Already done that. So we'll just have to get things upright and turned around and plugged in and see what happens. Okay, moment of truth here. Well, we're powered up, screen's booting up. Do a couple tests here about uh, auto home, and I'll probably have to re-level the bed after all this fooling around. Still having an issue here. We got power. I uh, know I got a good main board. And I put it in the auto home and it doesn't home. In fact, I can't even make the stepper motors move uh, from the control pad here. I can't imagine all the stepper motors are bad. And I do have another main board to try yet, but that's starting to get kind of old swapping those out. I did uh, update the firmware to the latest edition. I've checked all the limit switches. They are operate in a normally closed position and I checked to make sure I had continuity through them and I checked all the way back to the main board to make sure I didn't have a broken wire or something that would uh, prevent this from operating. So that's where it stands right now and the saga continues with this one. It just seems to be a lemon. So as you can see the saga continues with this one printer. The new one I bought works absolutely perfect right out of the box. have no problems with it other than I need to do a couple mods with it with the bed, etc. But that's not part of this. What I have here appears to be a lemon. I can't believe that after all of these different part swaps and substitutions and everything that something else failed. It just boggles my mind that this thing is such a lemon. Uh, it did make one print after the power supply swap everything worked just perfect but after it had been powered down and I messed with the brand new printer and got that all up and working and while that was printing I moved this over to another table uh, just maybe 10 feet away and powered it back up was going to make another print with it and one of the first things I always do is the auto home it wouldn't auto home it just locked up so I thought well maybe something within the firmware locked it up Turned it off, rebooted it, it came up as normal. Thought, well, let's make sure that the uh, hot handle preheat, no problem. Bed preheats, no problem. And while that was preheating, I thought, well, let's just manually move the different X, Y, and Z axes. Wouldn't work. Nothing would move, regardless of what I put in there for it. And this, even after the uh, hot end and the bed had reached temperature. So back off, 
shut it off again, turn it back on, tried once again for auto home, nothing. Okay, let's reload the firmware. Try, I tried reloading the original 1.01 firmware, made no difference. I put the 1.0.2 firmware back in there, still no difference. So here I have a printer again that's not working, but it did make one print. So it's going to set over there off to the side for a while uh, until I decide to try to mess with it some more. Uh, I'm not going to keep throwing parts at it, that's for sure. I don't, this, like I said, this just boggles my mind. But anyway, if you got something out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions on maybe something you've run into with a situation like this, because I can't believe all the stepper motors are bad, leave something in the comments. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop. See you in the next one.